<laughs> well, we, we still don't know the extent of all the Russian meddling in the 2016 election. It does seem pretty clear what they were after. They were after America lifting our massive economic sanctions against them. Clearly, the sanctions were working, especially in the clothing industry, because even the richest man in Russia couldn't afford a shirt. <laughs> now, remember, it was promising the Russians that he would end the sanctions, then lying about it to the FBI that brought down former National Security Advisor and Supreme Allied Commander of Pouty Town, Michael Flynn. <laughs> and now, thanks to an anonymous whistleblower, we know that during the transition, Flynn told a business associate that the Russian sanctions would be, quote, ripped up so they could go ahead with their secret business deal, a joint project to build nuclear reactors in the Arab world with... Any guesses? It rhymes with Russia. <laughs> and it's Russia. In fact, could have been Prussia. In fact, <laughs> Flynn texted his business partner that the plan was good to go. And if all that wasn't ballsy enough, Flynn sent the text while he was on the dais during Trump's inaugural address. He was making secret Russia plans while Trump was being sworn in. That's like interrupting your wedding to text your mistress. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Hold on. You up? Bloop. <laughs> I'm sorry, where were we? Now, one of those texts was apparently sent somewhere around 12-11 that afternoon. Let's see, and this is true, what Trump was saying while Flynn was thumb-typing his deal with Russia. Every decision on trade, on taxes, on immigration, on foreign affairs will be made to benefit American workers and American families. Specifically, it'll benefit Mike Flynn and Mike Flynn's family. Right, Mike? Mike, who are you texting while I'm talking? Oh, the guys who gave me the election? Say hi. <laughs> now, while there's a lot of crazy news in national politics, like this story we're just talking about, please, let's not forget that there's also some insane stuff going on at a local level. This week in Pennsylvania, something strange happened during what was supposed to be a run-of-the-mill committee meeting on land use. There is a better way to do this, guys. We don't have to proceed on this one. I, I hear you. I understand there's some hard feelings with Penn. Representative Dye. Bradford, yes. just look, I'm a heterosexual. I have a wife. I love my wife. I don't like men, as you might, but don't stop touching me all the time. <laughs> So, like, keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> like, if you want to touch somebody, you have people on your side of the aisle that might like it. I don't. Wow. <laughs> I would hate to be that guy's tailor. <laughs> Look, I'm flattered, but I don't need a zipper for your easy access to my bathing suit area. I'm a straight, heterosexual man male who likes the lady parts, and I can name them. <laughs> now, <laughs> who's the guy with the irresistibly sexy sleeve? It's State Representative Daryl Metcalf, a staunch opponent of same-sex marriage, who has said he does not believe in civil rights protections based on sexual orientation. And no surprise, after getting to second base with Daryl's arm, his handsy colleague revealed his gay agenda. I think we'd be wise to keep to the topic of, as it turns out, landlocked easements. <laughs> yeah. And we all know what landlocked easements means. <laughs> the non-possessory right to use and or enter onto a parcel of land without public road access. But in a super gay way. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. Sarah Paulson is here. But when we return, I introduce you to an ordinary American hero. Stick around. Wow, what a cliffhanger. What's gonna happen in the next Late Show video? Click subscribe to find out. <laughs>